What is up, YouTube, and welcome into the newest episode of Entertainment Purposes Only. I am your host, Ben Hardy, as always. And, you know, I thought that we had to do a show this week, obviously. Uh, you know, just unfortunately not a whole lot going on in the college football world for us to even talk about. So we'll get into some things like, you know, college basketball starting up. It's starting to go strong, obviously. Conference play getting going. NBA regular season turning along as much as ever. NFL playoffs starting this week. So, you know, with college football being slow, I just thought we could dive into some of those things, and that'll be our episode for tonight. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So college basketball for the top five losses. No, I'm kidding, of course. Nick Saban just retired last night. What else do you think we're going to talk about? Nick Saban out at Alabama. A historic announcement. Changes college football world forever. So that's what we're going to be getting into here tonight. Guys, look, I'm not going to tell you a whole lot you don't know about how great Nick Saban was tonight, but maybe I will. Some of these statistics that this man accomplished over his entire career are so insane, so absurd that you wouldn't even believe it. We all know about the championships, seven total national championships, six of them at Alabama, one of them at LSU, seven national titles, the most all-time by any coach. We know that. Think about it, though. How many of those national titles did he win with an actual good NFL-level quarterback? Think about it. Go ahead, think through them. The answer is one. He won seven national titles. Only one of them was with a good pro quarterback. That was that 2017 one where second and 26 against Georgia where Jalen and Tua sort of tag teamed it. Besides that, he won in 2003 with Matt Mock as his quarterback, who's a dentist now, by the way. He won his first one in Alabama with Greg McElroy, had a cup of coffee as a backup in the league. A.J. McCarron has been a career backup in the NFL. He won the next two. Jake Coker won his next one. Then you had the Tua and Jalen one. And then, of course, you got Mac Jones winning the one in 2020. Now, Mac Jones was very good in college. Don't get me wrong. He was a difference maker on that team, but it hadn't really worked out for him in the NFL. Seven national titles, six of them with pretty much throwaway quarterbacks once they got to the next level, if they even did. It's insane, insane to think about. Next, from 2009 to 2020, he won half of the national championships. Half of Over a 12-year span, he won half at Alabama. That's prime Tiger Woods stuff. That's him versus the field, even money bet. It's insane. Again, they without good quarterbacks most of the time. And the times that he actually did have difference makers at quarterback, they usually didn't win those years, which is just a whole other thing. But the bulk of his career spent in the SEC, which I don't care what any of you say, best conference has been the whole time he's been there. 11 and 1 in SEC championship games. 11 and 1 between his time at LSU and Alabama. 11 and 1. His only loss that year to the uh, Urban Meyer, Tim Tebow, Florida team in 2008 with all the criminals on it. Even got his revenge against them the following year. 11 and 1. And a lot of these SEC championships were against teams that had they beaten Nick Saban in that game, would have gone on to play for national titles. Most of these, he wasn't beaten up on nine and three teams. I can even speak right. I'm stuttering. Just His teams were ranked number one in the country at some point in the season for 15 consecutive seasons. These stats keep getting more and more absurd as I say them. There were some years in there where they weren't happy with their end result. 
but they were ranked number one at some point in there. 15 consecutive seasons. He's the only coach to ever win a national title in three different decades. These next two are just, I don't even know what, they're beyond comprehension. These next two statistics here. The 14 playoff lasted 10 seasons, 2014 to 2023. In the 10 year history of the 14 playoff, 14 playoff. Now this is not even like in basketball where you can just be one of the top 65 teams, or whatever, and make a run and get to the final four. This is, you have to be start to finish resume wise one of the top four teams. The equivalent to that would be in the basketball tournament, a team being one of the four number one seeds in the tournament. In the 10 team, the 10 year history of the four team playoff, his team made that playoff eight times. Eight out of 10, he was in there. 80% of the time, his team came out of conference championship week as a top Four team in the country. It'll never be done again. It'll never be done again. The the two that he didn't, the two that he didn't, one year they lost a game to what's widely considered one of the, either the best or second best college football team of all time with that 2019 LSU team, lost a game to them. And then when their star quarterback got hurt, lost an Iron Bowl at Auburn because they doinked the field goal off the post. That's why they didn't make one of them. And the other one they didn't make, they lost two games during the regular season, both of them on the road and on the very last plays of the game. They're walk-off losses. So those are the two he didn't make. That's how close he was to going 10 for 10 and making the playoff. 14 playoff. It'll never be done again. Last one. This one's just absurd. This one is so stupid. I can't even believe what I'm about to tell you. Nick Saban went 9-3 and three against teams who were ranked number one in the country when he played against them. Did you hear what I said? Nine and three against teams ranked number one in the country when he played against them. It'll never be done again. Water break. Listen. The term GOAT gets overused these days. Oftentimes when I do it, I'm doing it ironically. But he is the GOAT, period, end of discussion, no doubt about it. He is the greatest of all time. There will never be another like him. Nobody will match those stats that I just told you. Nobody is finishing 80% of their seasons inside the top four. Nobody is beating number one team in the country at an 80% clip. Not happening. Not happening. And the guy, for his age, you got to give him credit. He adapted and changed with the times as well as anybody. When Gus Malzahn gets to Auburn and Chad Morris is offensive coordinating at Clemson, and it's all this no huddle, up tempo, RPO stuff that's impossible to stop. You know, you got linemen actually going like five yards down the field on pass plays that aren't being called with the RPOs. He just sits there in the press conference. He asks you, he says, All I'm going to say is, are we sure this is where we want the game of college football to go? Now, he was coming off a loss there to Auburn that Gus Malzahn. Everyone's saying, Oh, Saban's scared. 
Saban skate. He doesn't like it. That's not his game. The way it's played now, he's getting he's getting left in the dust. He's getting left behind. All he said was, "Are we sure this is where we want the game to go?" Well, the answer came back pretty clear. Yes, no rules were changed, anything like that, to prevent that kind of stuff. So he said, "All right, fine. I can't win games fourteen to three anymore." I'm just going to go out, hire an offensive coordinator named Lane Kiffin. And instead of trying to beat you 14 to three, we're just going to beat you 45 to 14 instead. Fine by me. The transfer era. Later on in his tenure, some of his biggest contributors were transfers. Jamison Williams, Henry Toa Toa, Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, these powerhouse programs, they're going to lose some guys. But if you know what you're doing, you're going to be able to plug your holes. He adapted just fine. He stayed young. I'll never forget a few years ago, that clip of Josh Jacobs being interviewed on the Dan Patrick show. He said, tell you, tell us something we don't know about Nick Saban. He said he loves D's nuts jokes. Who saw that coming? I just wanted to throw that in there because I think it's funny. But how many guys, how many careers did Nick Saban kill? Not kill, but, you know, how many guys would history remember so much more fondly if it wasn't for Nick Saban going to Alabama? You think of Mark Rick to Georgia, Tommy Tuberville, Phil Fulmer. Less miles. How many more games and titles could those guys have won if it wasn't for that freight train machine right there at Alabama? Would now a lot of this next guy, you know, he was getting in his own way with stuff, but would Urban Meyer have stuck around at Florida way longer, kept that dynasty going if it wasn't for Nick Saban at Alabama? He derailed so many careers because they just couldn't get past him. On the flip side, how many high-profile guys, how many careers did he save by taking them in as analysts, letting them raise up the coordinators? Lane Kiffin, Steve Sarkeesian, Butch Jones, Bill O'Brien, these guys were left for dead. Until Saban says, yeah, I'll give you another shot. Come on in here. Get you processed up. He had his process. He perfected his process. And if you were going to be a player or coach in his organization, you had to trust the process. You had to live by the process. He wasn't changing the process to accommodate you. You had to change to accommodate the process. And it's such a good way to think about things. In everyday life, process-based thinking over results-based thinking. You do things the right way, the results will come. Nick Saban did that better than anybody else. Trust the process. He's the greatest to ever do it. End of discussion. Period. Point blank period. Nobody will surpass him, I don't think. Now, it's a very sought-after job. Who's going to fill it? There's two schools of thought. One school of thought is, well, it's the best job in the country. Anybody should want it. Another one is, you go there, you'll never be good enough. You'll be fired in three years if you don't win two national titles in your first three years, whatever. I was surprised Dan Lanning turned it down. Now, it's I guess we got to trust him. All I'll say is Nick Saban also publicly turned it down before he took it, but it'd be a tough look for Landing to take it at this point. He was my top candidate. This point, as we're recording here at 6.30 on Thursday night, I'd be surprised if it doesn't end up being Kalen DeBoer or Lane Kiffin. What Kiffin's gotten Ole Miss to, 
given the Bama resources, what could he accomplish? Same goes for DeBoer. Caleb DeBoer just doesn't lose games. Like, everywhere he is, his record is absurd. It's like 73 and 6 or something stupid like that. But that's it. Nick Saban, retired. The rest of the Southeastern Conference and college football contenders around the country rejoice. They'll have a better shot at winning now. End of an era for sure. But, you know, we knew it was coming eventually. I think a lot of people are surprised that it happened now, but that's that. Now, moving on, we did have a national championship game the other night. I don't, really don't even care to talk about it. That game was awful. Both teams were awful. Both quarterbacks were awful. Michael Penix, as good as he was against Texas, he was that bad against Michigan. I told you guys to watch on the SkyCast against Texas. It was one of the more majestic games I've ever watched, watching Michael Penix from the SkyCast. Watching him from the SkyCast against Michigan the other night, I – I don't know that there are any starting quarterbacks in the country who would have played worse than him in that game, if we're being honest. I mean, there were guys open, man. There were guys open. He just missed them all. I mean, all. It was, oh, my gosh. I'm not accusing him of point shaving, but if I was a lesser man, I might. J.J. McCarthy's not any good either. We just have a 15 and 0 national champion in Michigan who just didn't have a passing game in the back half of the year. Like I said, 14 playoffs been around 10 years. This Michigan team, in my opinion, by far the worst champion of that era. If all those teams played each other, I think that they wouldn't beat a single one of the other teams. But with Michigan winning and covering, Kevin Kaufman at Arbitrage Racing. He has won our Bull Mania pick and pool. Your shirt is in the mail. He'll receive it this weekend, but that puts a bow on that. Thank you to everybody who watched our group episode the other night with Kevin, Max, and Robbie. And we got some good suggestions for Max for his uh, college football team put in the comments there. Uh, some blue teams, sort of average uh, programs there, which is what he's looking for. So uh, next time I have them on, we'll dive deeper into that, among other things. Remember, like and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up at the bottom of the video. And uh, again, that really just wanted to come on, talk saving, give those statistics, you know, leave no doubt about whether or not he's the greatest of all time. People can say some ignorant things, but there's there's just no doubt about it. So anyway, that's all I got for tonight. Uh, like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Guys.